Good morning, and thank you for joining us for the BPM Change Management PRR Review Monthly Meeting. My name is Nicole Hines, representing ISO Customer Readiness, and I will be facilitating today's web conference. Today's call is being recorded. These recordings are for informational and convenience purposes only, and any related transcription should not be reprinted without the ISO's permission. As a reminder, these monthly calls are structured to stimulate an honest dialogue and engage in different perspectives. While we welcome comments and questions, please remember to keep comments professional and respectful. We will be taking questions throughout the call today. If you are dialed in by the phone only and not on the WebEx, you can enter the question queue at any time by pressing pound two on your telephone keypad. If you are connected audio through the WebEx platform, please use the raise hand feature icon that's located above the chat box in the lower right hand side of your screen. Please introduce yourself before asking your question. And if you need technical assistance during the call today, please send a chat message to the event producer. The purpose of today's meeting is to discuss the proposed revision request that are in the initial or recommendation stage of the process. We will be discussing 19 PRRs today, 13 are in the initial stage, six are in the recommendation stage, and all PRRs were submitted by the ISO. The purpose of the business practice manuals is to set forth the business practices that implement the ISO tariff. Each year, the ISO conducts a yearly policy roadmap to consider and rank initiatives. Policy changes submitted through the PRR process will be referred to the policy initiative roadmap, and each subject area in a BPM is based on enabling language in our ISO tariff. The PRR process cannot be used to introduce changes that are not supported by existing tariff authority. Our first PRR will be the Managing Full Network Model BPM, PRR 1519, Utilize North to South and South to North nomograms all in real time markets to manage physical and market flows with all lines and services and or outage conditions is in the recommendation stage. And I will pass that on to Kalani to go over this PRR. Uh, good morning, uh, this is uh, Vivania. Uh, I will talk about this uh, PRR. And for this uh, PRR and uh, revision include the change in section 2.1.1.2 to align the BPM with updated contract obligation and the quality pass operator agreement, and then inform the market participants that uh, north to south and south to north flow constraint will be enforced on the California Oregon intertie of quality to manage physics and the market flows in all real time markets. And this is the emergency PRR. The effect day was August 4th, 2023. And during the recommendation comment, we didn't receive uh, any comment. The comment period was expired on September 13th. And however, we received a question for a follow up question from a Pacific Core uh, regarding their. Um, Com initial comment. So there's a, 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 a separate meeting has been scheduled to discuss with the Pacific Core um, on their concern. And uh, so regarding this PR, the next step is uh, final decision. Are there any questions about this PR? Thanks, Kelani. The next, um, let's see. Sorry about that. I clicked the, the wrong button there on my presentation. Um, the next PRR we'll be discussing is the reliability requirement. Um, PRR 1523 is the maximum import capability enhancement policy changes in the recommendation um, stage. All right, so PRR 1523, um, the reason for this change was to reflect the remaining items for the maximum import capability or the MIC enhancement policy initiative. 
We did not receive any comments and the comment period expired on September 13th. And the next step is to post the final decision. Um, are there any questions on this? There are no hands raised at this time. All right, thank you. Nicole, did you drop off? Um, maybe I uh, might be muted. Oh, I can hear you now, Nicole. Okay, great. Oh, sorry, I thought I had an audio issue. Okay. So for this PRR 1520, it's about a process for handling disconnected. Uh, P note for congestion revenue right purpose, and this is a PR for the uh, con the congestion revenue right uh, BPM. The reason for the revision is the day ahead market a software parameter update, which will increase the uh, note replacement layer for the disconnected uh, disconnected note. Um, this will eliminate the manual workaround in CRR and price correction. Uh, recommendation comments none. And recommendation comments period expires September 13th, uh, 2023. Next step is final decision. Any questions or concerns? As a reminder, if you're on the telephone only, you can hit pound two to enter the question queue or use the raise hand feature in the uh, WebEx platform. At this time, there are no raised hands. Great, thank you. Um, the next BPM we'll be talking about is market instruments. Um, we have several PRRs in the um, initial stage, 1524s in the recommendation stage, and we'll introduce those as we um, move through those. Um, the first uh, PRR I'm gonna hand it over is for Michael. Good morning, it's Mike Martin in operations. PRR 1524, um, also related to the MIC, the maximum import capacity requirement uh, enhancements project. And this is specifically discusses the OASIS reports as a part of that project. We didn't get any comments and uh, the same expiration period for comments applies. So um, we're at the final decision with this PRR. The next one I'll proceed is uh, 1531, uh, also discusses um, the CMRI, Customer Market Results Interface Reports. And these reports are specific to the RSSE Phase Two Enhancement Project, and it discusses uh, the low priority types um, reports that we are going to put on CMRI. No comments, same expiration, and we're at the post-recommendation stage. Uh, 15.30, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, nope, you're fine, Michael, go ahead. Okay, BR 15.34, the uh, Western, uh, the EIM greenhouse gas enhancement effort. Um, and this is BPM's uh, updates this effort to deploy the Washington greenhouse gas enhancements and fixes some previous edits and interim solutions that we put it forward in the first uh, release. Uh, we did get comments from SRP. I do believe they, um, if an SRP person is uh, on this call, please confirm that we've answered those questions and uh, and then um, we're at the same stage post recommendation. 
I see a hand raised for VJ. Can we get VJ on the line, please? Hi, VJ Singh from Pacific Core. Sorry, this is actually about 1531. Um, was just wondering when these reports are going to be populated on CMRI. I, the RSSC project, I think, I'm, you know what, I, I'm not sure. I think we moved it to November, oh, November 1. I, I apologize. I can't give you the exact date because I'm not sure. Does anyone no else? I can just follow up afterwards, too. Yeah, this is, I, this is an easy question. I should be able to answer it. Thanks. That's it for me. Yeah. And the reason why is I know that it, there's been discussions of 10-1, 11-1. I just don't know where we landed. Um, let's see, moving on. So I think without objection, there was no questions on the greenhouse gas one. I'll move to 1537. This is um, additional reports on CMRI on the state of charge, exceptional dispatch data. So this is when we do an exceptional dispatch on a storage resource. We can do it to hold the state of charge or, or charge the state of charge. And because we are implementing um, new settlement payment for this, we are creating a new report um, that has all these pieces. We didn't get any comments in the same recommendation. Uh, status for this one. Thank you, Michael. Are there any questions on any of these PRRs? There are no hands raised at this time. Thank you. Um, so we're going to continue with Michael on the market operations, CPM, we have one in the recommendation stage and about five in the initial stage. Okay, thanks, Nicole. So 1521 is, um, it's a new process. It's actually been implemented. I think this one was an emergency, if I'm not mistaken. The new process is to adjust the timing of the process to automatically match your energy profile after a wreck. And so we set that process at 1530, but what happens if we are late with the day ahead publishing and you know we get too close to that? So we implemented a process to um, disclose and notify when this automatic match process will run. So that gives you a good idea of what this uh, PRR discusses. And um, we didn't get any comments. This one is in the final decision stage. So these next ones I think are related to, uh, they're all kind of related to several enhancements works. Uh, PR 1526 is an addition of the withdrawal limit or a charging constraint for battery resources. This is a biddable constraint that you can bid in um, to day ahead or real time. Um, and we did get a uh, significant, uh, you know, large, well-written um, series of comments and questions. We have not posted a reply. The only one that if anyone from next year is on, the um, only comment I can um, confirm the there is confusion on um, if you do not bid in, if you do not constrain bid in the um, constraint in day ahead and you get a regulation board, then in real time you attempt to constrain or to or put in the biddable constraint, it'll be ignored. Um, that is because we want to honor the regulation. Um, so that comment in your questions that was not clearly stated, so we agree we will revise that and make it more clear. The other pieces, there's two other larger conversations and we'll get back to you. So this one's in the post recommendation stage. Uh, 
So for PRR 1527, this is changes to ADS, and we also included um, change to the T minus 20 auto approval, and I'll kind of separate the two. Um, the first piece is a late tag or a tag that comes in with auto, oh, I'm sorry, within the last 20 minutes. Currently today, we auto accept these. Um, by NERC, at any BA can decide to auto accept them or auto deny them, it's up to the BA. So we are going to change our process to auto deny. Doesn't mean that they can't be instated, it is within 20 minutes, it is difficult to implement a tag. You have to get it rolling before 10 minutes. So it, it is difficult. So um, that is disclosure that we will con con change the default to consider tags late on a case-by-case -case basis. On the other piece of this, the partial accept for has boards, partial accept in, is uh, currently capped well, it's currently capped at the RUC award. This change caps it at the HASP award. What folks, what, what the change here is the partial accept cannot be higher than the HASP award. Um, and we did not get any comments, and this is in the post uh, recommendation stage. Here are 1530 changes to AS constraints and bidding requirements um, as part of the energy storage enhancement. This is in track one. This is a series of detailed um, um, calculations essentially to ensure that AS awards, if you're a battery, that you have sufficient state of charge to um, honor and provide that, that AS. Um, detailed section, way too long to go into it in any detail here, um, and this was an emergency change uh, to correct uh, several of the, um, the formulas that we put in the prior version. So we did not get any comments, and this is also in the post-recommendation stage. Okay, 1533, removal of the day ahead econ market type. This one, um, so we are removing the day ahead econ in the tagging time frame, in the tagging realm. It's still a valid market award. And the reason is, this is actually to help the tagging process. If we're asking you to tag and say it's a day ahead econ, but our has process changes it to a real-time econ or RTLPT, then you would be burdensome or burdened with the, the task of having to go back and update your tag. So we realize that's not really necessary. So we're just removing this day ahead econ type and make it equivalent to day ahead LPT. So we did get comments on from SRP. Um, I remember some some responses going out, and I I believe we need to um, ensure what I said was captured and communicated. I should post it on the um, on this PR, which I don't, do not believe I have. Um, the uh, that was the only comments, and this is also in post recommendation. Okay, PRR 1536, this is new payment for ED hold state of charge. We just, this was the counterpart to when I mentioned the report for holding state of charge. When, in, when we do a, an exceptional dispatch for holding SOC, the current payment doesn't account for this as well as this new counterfactual approach. We will post a report showing um, that revenue, and this is in the rare, rare time frame when we do hold SOC EDs. Um, same um, expiration, and this is in post recommendation. Thank you. 
Thank you, Michael. Are there any questions on any of the PRRs covered so far? Reminder, you can hit pound two if you're on the telephone only or raise hand icon in the WebEx. At this time, there are no raised hands. All right, thank you. So the next PTM we're going to be talking about is settlements and billings. Um, we have one in the recommendation stage, two in the initial stage. Um, we did have some changes from the last presentation. So I'm going to hand that over to Matthew to discuss. Thank you, Nicole. Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew Amati, and I'm here to talk about the PRRs for settlements. So <clears throat> we had a couple of updates to a couple of PRRs that we posted. And I'm going to uh, talk in detail on those uh, regarding those changes, and then um, uh, see if you guys have any questions. So let's start off with PR 1528. 1528 is associated with energy storage. So the update that we made was to a one BPM, and that's RT net amount of version 5.38. And what, what, what was the change? So the change was. Um, we added the pre-summer uh, market simulation. This does not change what we implemented for pre-summer, or there are any changes for the fall uh, 2023 release. All we did is that portion of the pre-summer was not included in the original BPM posted to this PRR, and that BPM is RT net amount version 5.38. So we went back and we added that section. We didn't change anything else. And we uh, announced this on September 7th, and we discussed this on the settlement user group call on September 13th. Any question on this change to uh, 1528 energy storage? Okay, no questions. Let's move on to the next. So the second change that we made was to PRR 1522. This PRR is associated to a dispute. <clears throat> uh, base schedule is not accounted for settlements uh, for WM pumps, the storage resources when they're in pumping mode. Um, and so the change here is a very simple change. It has to do with the effective start date. So originally when, when we posted this BPM to this PRR, and this BPM is the uh, PC metered energy adjustment factor and real-time energy quantity. These two had an effective start date of April 1st, 2023. And we went back and we changed this effective start date to March 1st, 2023. Why? Why did we do this? So the reason why we did this is we looked back and we saw that we provided, CalISO provided an impact analysis to WEIM uh, resources, and that had an effective date of March 1st, not April. So we went back and we updated the BPMs, those two BPMs that you see. All we did change the effective date from April 1st, 2023 to March 1st, 2023. So we pulled it back by one month. And this was in the, uh, the announcement was made on September 2nd, and we did discuss this in our last uh, settlement user group call. Any question on change we made for 1522? Okay, no, no questions. So let's move on. <clears throat> So this, as we discussed, this is the uh, 1522, and, and this is the final recommendation. So this change had to do with the WEIM uh, pump uh, uh, storage resources that were not accounted for uh, when they were in a pumping mode. And so the effective date, which was changed on this BPM, is now March 1st, 2023. We did not receive any comments, and the recommendation period expires September 13th. Next step is post final decision. Next, please. PR 1528, which we touched on, this is the energy storage. Uh, this has the effective date of 11 1 2023. No comments were received. Initial comment period expired September 13. And next step is post recommendation. Next slide, please. 
1529, this was a dispute, yeah, on Charge Code 6456, updated configuration guide for entertainment deviation settlement <clears throat> to resolve rounding issue. And this has the uh, retro trade date, which goes back to June 1st of 2022. No initial comments received. Uh, initial uh, comment period expires on September 13th, and the next step is post recommendation. Any questions about uh, the three PRRs that I talked about? Okay, thank you all for your time, appreciate it. All right, thank you. The next BCM is the energy imbalance market. We have three PRRs in the initial stage and I'm going to hand this back to Michael. Okay, uh, PR 1525, the emergency assistance energy transfer opt-in process. Um, this, is, this was submitted as an emergency PRR and it's effective back on August 14th. When we introduced the emergency, the AET process, um, we, we put it connected it to the master file process and we found that we we and EIM entities could use a faster way of opting in. So we outlined how to do that in the BPM. So this is what we um, we also went ahead and implemented. So any EIM entity or the KISO can use this process. Uh, we didn't get any comments and that's also expired on the 13th. It's ready for posting the recommendation. So PRR 1532 is the addition of the of an exemption to the fail to start rule. And this actually is labeled, I apologize, um, it's not just for hydro resources, it's for any resources um, that meet the requirements. The fail to start rule is a rule in the resource efficiency calculation in the bid capacity test essentially that if you haven't started up by the time you've, you're supposed to be online, well, we shouldn't, you shouldn't count your capacity towards the bid requirement test. Um, we did receive uh, 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 questions from SRP and NV Energy to further define what resources are eligible and I'm super close to posting the response. It, it, your comments were spot on. They are gonna be within a five minute. Pardon me, some background noise. The, within the five minute time frame of RTD and further details. Um, any questions on um, this PR? Okay, the next PR is 1535, the Western um, Imbalance Energy Greenhouse Gas Enhancement. This is the EIM side of that effort. The gas enhancements do affect EIM entities. And this is the update of like the, um, on the instrument side, the removal of some interim um, solutions and the implementation of the full functionality. This did not receive any comments and again, is in post recommendation status. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions on these PRRs? And there are no questions in the chat or in queue. All right, thank you. Um, so the next BPM meeting will be October 24th at 11 a.m. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please email us at bpm underscore cm at chiso.com. That concludes our call today, and thank you very much for attending. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. You may now disconnect. <laughs>